Now turning this hollow form with a finial line, really covering a lot of territory. So I'm going to leave time codes in the description. If you like a particular topic, you can just click on the time and jump to that topic. So thanks for watching and uh, enjoy yourself. You're going to be in the video. Ah. All right, now I have decided I need to turn a hollow form. It's been a while, and uh, I got a, a really nice piece of Madrone. It looks something like this. Well, I split it on my bandsaw, and I'm definitely going to make one. I'll probably end up making two. Let me bring you in a little closer, and I'll show you exactly what I'm going to do. Okay, now the problem I see with these particular blanks is if I'm going to make a hollow form, they're a little on the tall side. So what I've done here, let's see, where's my, my figures? If I go by the Fibonacci uh, golden mean, I need to go from this area where that blue line is to the top. So that's that 1.6 to one ratio, the golden mean ratio. And in inches, it comes out to four and a half to two and three sixteenths. All right. Anyway, uh, this area down here is just going to be for my tenon. So that'll be a, a good hollow form in proportion. So all right, I'll stop yakking. We'll go find a lathe and we'll we'll round this over. Okay, now I have two identical blocks of wood here that I'm going to make hollow forms out of. Got one of them chucked up here between centers. On this side I have a safety drive and on this side I have a live center. So I'm going to lock that down. And this safety drive is designed to slip. If you get a bad catch or if you get your fingers caught in here in the, the tool rest area. So if it does slip, I'll just tighten that down a little bit. I'm going to just round this over with my spindle roughing gouge. Okay, the next step in my operation is to create a, a tenon down here on the end of my piece. I've got this marked on my calipers. All right, that's good. I'll just take a parting tool and go down and establish that tenon. All right, now I think one important thing I can show you is that golden mean. I had that on my blank earlier when it was all square. Now I've got this rounded over. Um, the diameter down here is two and three quarter. If I multiply that by 1.6, which would be that proportion for the golden mean, I'm going to get uh, four and three eighths from this line to this line. And hopefully that'll be a nice proportion for my finished hollow form.
So I just took a narrow parting tool and defined the bottom and the top of my vessel. Here's my tenon, so this will be the bottom. I'm going to reverse this in the chuck jaws and do a little bit more shaping on this. Okay, I've got my blank reversed into some uh, chuck jaws. These are probably an inch and a half. They came with this particular chuck body. This is a Vicmark 100. So I'm going to leave the tail stock up for a little while, do a little bit of shaping on this, and I'll try to give you some different uh, camera angles. Okay, a couple things here as I work on my profile. Right in this area here, I'm going to have this be the largest diameter someplace, someplace in here. And this area down here that I got marked with my pencil, it's way too big in diameter right in here. So later on, I'm going to take that down, but I want to leave a little bit more mass right here and that'll help when I hollow this out. So I've just about got that where I want it. I'll keep checking my dimensions. I want the height of my vessel at about four and three eighths inches. Otherwise it's just gonna to be too tall. Okay, now I'm working on the upper part of my hollow form. Uh, let's start with the, the neck right here. Now later on as I hollow out this vessel, I get a lot of vibration. So I've got the tail center brought up for some support. I'm working on the very top that's going to be the uh, opening of my vessel. I just used a little spindle gouge to uh, work on that area. Now I've got a square end scraper with a fairly good burr on that. And I'm just fine-tuning the outside of the upper part of my vessel. And that's all I need to do. It's ready to sand. And I'm not going to go down too far because I'll work on that area a little later. Now to meet this curvature right here, I've got my double-ended Boxmaster scraper. Kind of clean that up just a little bit.
All right, now I think I'll save the sanding till later. I'm going to leave this area down here a little thicker while I hollow this out. So I'm going to part off this little piece of wood right here and I'll start hollowing this little beautiful madrone hollow form. Alright, I'm going to take my beating and parting tool and form a little uh, reverse cone right here, a divot for my drill to start. Right in the center. Right there. I'm just measuring to see how far down I need to, uh, to drill this. Alright, I'm going to use a couple different drills to complete this operation. I've got my my first twist drill. This has got a Morse taper on the uh, the end of it here that will go into my tailstock. I've got it marked with some tape. I'm going to turn my lathe down a little bit. Okay, you can probably see this a little bit better than that previous camera setup. Okay, as I was uh, drilling this out, I was getting some really horrendous squealing, so I just took the sound out of this. Uh, as I mentioned, this is a 5 8 inch drill, and uh, I've got the depth marked with some tape right there. Then I'm going to follow this up with a Forster bit that is seven eighths of an inch and I'll go down a little bit further. Okay then the next and final drill I'm going to use is this Forstner bit. It's an inch, it's seven eighths of an inch and that'll be my final uh, thickness on the opening anyway. <clears throat> Alright now that last drill bit I was using was squealing so I sprayed a little bit of uh, water in there to try to stop it but it didn't work much so there's my Forstner bit and I'm drilling that out to the depth. That's all there is to it let me get set up and we'll do a little hollowing on this piece. Okay now I promise you this is not going to be a thread chasing project I'm going to put a little chamfer right here at the opening of my hollow form and I may or may not put a little lid on this or a, a handle of some sort but I'm going to take my my box scraper put a chamfer on this in case I do that a little bit more speed Okay, now you can hear there's a little bit of vibration there, so I want to do that now before I remove any more mass from the inside of this. I always, pretty much, go with a straight tool. This is a Trent Bosch tool with a steel tip on it. And I will go down there as far as I can reach around this curve. I could probably hit most of that with this straight tool. Easier to control than a bent tool. Okay, now you really can't see what the tip of my tool is doing all that much and I've lowered the sound and I'm going to just talk over whatever sound there is in this video clip. I'm just trying to hollow out some of the upper portion of this to give my chips a little uh, clearance and some place to go as this uh, piece spins around. All right, now the name of the game is going to be to ch check and double check and hollow a little bit and go back and check it. Now what I'm going to use here to to gauge the thickness of my wall is this little 
handmade homemade tool I'm going to get that in the ballpark of what I want for the thickness and I'm going to just put that down in there I'm still pretty thick right there I made this from from this wire you can get that at Ace Hardware probably one of the big box stores I believe that's uh, 3 16 of an inch in diameter and you can mold that to any shape and size that you want and I hope I can get this in the camera here right back here uh, anyway it's a bigger one that's probably too big for this vessel all I need is this little one here I can I can pretty much reach clear to the bottom down in this area so a little bit more hollowing and then we'll go back and check it I'm turning my speed about 700 rpm been doing a little bit of hollowing on my project off camera and I'm going to cut a lot of this out I want to jump to making a finial for the lid on this I think it'll be a lot more interesting so let me uh, show you just a little bit more you can't see it anyway and uh, I'll finish this off and uh, sand it and put some finish on it and then I want to get to the the handle which is a little bit different from uh, the process that I usually do on a vessel like this. Okay, now right now I'm using a little carbide scraper to hog out some of this wood. I'm okay down to about right here, and I'm gonna continue down, and then I'm gonna do a little bit more profiling on the, on the lower part of my vessel. I wanted to leave that a little thick at this point. Okay, I've got my little hollow form pretty much profiled to where I want it. And I'm using my double-ended uh, Boxmaster scraper just to clean up the outside. Then we'll do a little sanding. Turn the lay speed up just a little bit about a thousand rpm and I'm going to move my tool across the wood very slowly this will give me a very nice finish I flipped my tool end for end and now I've got the other radius on this and I'm going to work on this part of my vessel. I'm getting a little vibration right here so I'm not going to go back go back out there All right, I'm gonna set my dust collector up and I'll I'll sand this and I'll do a little finishing on the outside and I'll show it to you all right now I'm finishing my little hollow form and I'm experimenting I got some uh, super fast thin star bond CA glue right there and I put a couple coats on all right, and it's uh, all very nice and smooth. Uh, I usually use a CA finish on pens or bottle stoppers, but it's uh, it's just fine on something this this small or large. 
So now I'm going to just take some uh, Tom Ackley's uh, sanding paste and finish this up. Put some of that on on there by hand. And I'll probably put a couple coats of this on and maybe a little bit of his restoring wax to finish up. The one thing I like, among other things that are really uh, a benefit for using this product, it shines up very nicely. Okay, that puts a really, really nice shine on it. It's not real glossy, you know, like annoying glossy, but it, uh, yeah, very nice. And this wood is just uh, a joy to turn. It's uh, easy to turn, sands and finishes very well. So now I'm going to turn my attention to the lid. And uh, I'll show you what I'm going to do there. All right, now I am ready to work on my finial. And I'm gonna to try to make a little bit more of a delicate finial for my vessel. And I found a nice piece of African black wood that'll, I think that'll be really good for the proportion of my project. And anyway, um, I'm gonna do this a little bit different than I, than I ordinarily do, no thread chasing but it's just gonna sit in there. Let me uh, check this up between centers and I'll round this over and start forming the base of this that will go in the top of my vessel. Okay, I'm rounding over my uh, blackwood blank, and you saw my my tool catch in there, and the wood spun a little bit. That's the safety drive. It comes with my robust lathe, and it's really awesome. It does really, really well. And if you want a little bit more tension, you just tighten your your quill back there. So I'm gonna I'm gonna form a tenon on this end right here that's going to go into the opening of my vessel and I've got that marked on my vernier calipers right there. Okay, I'm right in the ballpark, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my my blank off the lathe and, and try it in my vessel. Well, you know, I guess pretty well. Right there, it's a, a little bit of a, a suction fit, which is a, eh, probably a little, little too tight for what I would like. I'm going to fine tune that, but I think the proportion is going to be just fine. This is probably a little bit uh, too tall for the finial. Let me, let me work on this. Okay, now on another lathe, I went over and finished the bottom of my finial. It's going to sit inside my vessel. I like to do a little bit of detail work and sand that just to let people know I was there. Uh, 
Okay, now I am also going to change my live center to this uh, cup center that doesn't have a point. I don't want to put a point in the bottom of my little finial. Let's try this again. Line that up and there we go. Perfect. Okay, now I want to show you the inside of my vessel, the opening right here. If you can see that, I've got a little chamfer right on the opening, and then beyond that, there is just a straight recess, and it looks something like that. So this straight area here will fit inside the vessel, and then this chamfer I've got on this uh, piece of paper here will correspond to the, the chamfer in the top of my vessel. Yeah, and, and that'll give it a little bit more stability as it sits inside the vessel right here. So I'm going to start uh, working on that little chamfer right here. And I'll mark that on my calipers. Now I've got to say at this point, um, this is something that I really learned from Cindy Drozda in one of her DVDs. Yeah, right there. That's, that's good. So I don't know if you can see that pencil line, but I've got to take this wood away down to this level. And I think what I'll do is just check that on my vessel. I'm, I'm kind of guessing at this angle here on that chamfer. Okay, I'm, I'm in the ballpark now. I don't know if you can hear that. Let's take this up to the microphone. <laughs> and I'm still, I'm still too tight right there. I don't want that that tight. And, and that's this uh, cylinder right here needs to be uh, reduced in diameter just a little bit. But I think my, my chamfer is, is good. Yeah. I don't know, I kind of like that little pop in there. All right, we'll put her back up here. Do a little bit more work. Okay, I've done a little bit of work off camera. I've got this, this chamfer here all set. This is all ready to go. I can do a little sanding on that. And I've got the, the height of my finial blank marked right here. I did a little parting right there. So that's going to be, that's going to be the top of my finial. I'm going to part that off and find some pin jaws that this will fit into. All right, be careful parting off between centers. So there is my, my finial blank. Let me find some pin jaws and we'll reverse this. Now my initial plan was to put my, my finial in pin jaws and turn it. I didn't like that, so what I'm going to do, I've got a little piece of uh, maple in my chuck jaws here, and I'm going to put um, my finial into this in a jam chuck. I am going to use my tailstock <clears throat> as long as I can. So there's the bottom, dusty, but it's all it's all finished and sanded. And I think this will 
cause the, the least amount of damage on the bottom of this piece of blackwood. So there it is, and I'll... Um, yeah, I, I think that's going to be good. I like the way that fits in there. All right, now I've got my dimension, the recess, marked. I don't know if you can see that or not. Let's uh, highlight that in pencil right there. And I'm going to take a box scraper and just uh, hog that wood out. A little bit more speed. Okay, now I need this little jam chuck to mimic the profile of the base of my finial. Okay, there's a straight area and there's a chamfer, and I'm just about there. All right, now I have less than an ideal perfect fit in here, so I've got a piece of paper towel to make up for my lack of skill here. All right, now. Like I said, I'm going to use my tail center as much as I can. Um, I've got a really small tool rest on, on this. It's a three inch tool rest. And boy, it's really handy when you need it. All right, now I've taken a pen blank, an acrylic pen blank, and just cut off the very end of it. I've got that in there to protect, to protect my piece from the point. There's a little point right in here, and I don't want that in the top of my finial. I'll have to deal with that later on, anyway. Okay, now I found a little detail gouge, a spindle detail gouge with a longer bevel, a little bit sharper angle on that, and I've got something in mind for my profile. Down here, it's completed. I just need to work on this area and out to the very top of my, my finial. And I'm turning about a thousand RPM at this point. I just took my little uh, parting tool and kind of finished off that detail below my onion. I like it. And I'm getting a very nice cut off that. I'll just do a little sanding later. And now I'm going to come out here and, and start working on the very top of my finial. Okay, now I've sanded up to right here to about 600 grit. I'm going to put a little bit of finish on that and then I'm going to wrap a little tape around this so I can take my tail center away. So I've got some uh, Mylan's friction polish sitting here. I don't know if you can see that but trust me it's it's Mylan's. A little bit on on this area right here. I'm going to speed up a little bit and buff this in. Uh, 
Okay, now this is not going to be very pretty, but it'll get the job done. And notice the way I'm winding this uh, last layer of masking tape on there. I'm going in this direction, so if it's flopping around, I'm not going to catch that and it won't unwind. So I'm going to proceed with the top part of my little finial here. Uh, Hope that doesn't come loose. Okay, I've got my my tail stock backed away a little bit. All right, now I've got a piece of poster board here uh, backing up my piece so you can see what I'm doing. And really what I'm going to do here is I'm going to just do a little, little scrape on this and if I can get my finger around there to support it if I need it. It's running really true so I've just got to be careful not to knock it out of place. A little bit of shaping on the very end of my finial. I don't like what I got so far. All right. I think I'm there. I'm going to do a little sanding on this and put a little bit more that friction polish on it. And I didn't knock it off center, so that worked out pretty good. Nothing like a little bit of duct tape, <laughs> nothing like a little bit of um, masking tape for security. I've learned everything about finials from Cindy Drozda, including the masking tape trick. Okay, it's time to take all the masking tape away. See if we can get this out of the jam chuck. Yeah. Now I'm going to buff this just a little bit. Make sure there's no tape residue on the, on the base here where I had the masking tape. All right. Okay, there you have it. I'm going to wipe off the dust and go into my photo room and take some pictures. Yeah, that's not too bad. A little hollow form with a, a little bit of a finial. It's not exactly a, a needle thin finial, but I like it. Yeah. Thank you very much for watching and I'll talk to you next time. Let's take a look at some pictures of this really, really nice piece of Madrone with a black wood finial. Yeah.